room and then you add your seasoning. What most people do right now is they dump in the celery and the bell pepper and the onions all together. That is a grievous error because the celery and the bell pepper are very watery seasonings that do not have the high concentration that the onions have in their juices. We're not going to caramelize the onions. Instead, the onion juices, by adding the onions first and by themselves, we're going to have a magic trick happen. So the onions are cooling the roux down, keeping it from burning, and at the same time, that is the good mother smell. Do you get that? Oh, goodness, it's hard to wash off, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> I teach a cooking class and come home, and my husband goes, it's the roux, huh, honey? Sometimes it's not, it's not like the, um, the eau de love, the eau de roux, you know. But anyway, so here you see another color change is happening because the onion juices bring the color of the roux down yet another shade of darkness. So then if I were to add the celery and the bell peppers, which I'm not going to bother to do right now, but I because this is what I wanted to show you all, it could lighten up a little bit, but you've got it to that really beautiful, perfect color now. And this is really what it's supposed to be. Okay? Well, except in the kitchen when it's a little light. Everybody has a different idea. Exactly. Exactly. So now, now, now I'll be quiet and you all tell everybody what I did wrong. Because I did the laundry list. Yeah, there, there's no right and wrong in, in cooking in South Louisiana. It's all in the person who stirs the pot. Right? That's right. And you know, it's also, you know, uh, Lynn and I would just chat. My mother and my brother rarely cooked with garlic when they made gumbos and made you and whatever. Uh, they used it for other things. But they used garlic, so I mean, it's just a, it, it's a flavor of, it, whatever tickles your taste buds, do it. Uh, except that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> except, <laughs> but, except. Well, uh, about, oh, about six or seven years ago, I was invited to go to Austin, Texas to judge a gumbo contest. I'm like, why are they making these poor people make gumbo in Texas? They like to make chili. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, my husband was there and he came and he said, uh, I've got some of the recipes. He says, do not eat number 10. <laughs> And they took it literally and said, I'm not eating right rattlesnake gumbo. Yeah. Uh, I don't care how crazy they think it is. But I mean, there, are some, there are some, uh, I hate to say rules, but yeah, the general thing in South Louisiana is gumbos can be made with just about anything. You know, and the lady looks out of the back door, whatever crawls, flies, or is around, you can use to make gumbo, with a few exceptions. But it's all in your taste buds. If you like a dark, 